Uh, Chairman Fred, um, we're going to talk about various issues dealing with the, that affect our communities, both in Chicago and here, Philadelphia, and in urban areas across this country. First, let's talk about the issue that the white media tends to always plaster, whether it's in print or 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 or, or television, is the violence in Chicago. Now, looking at it uh, analytically and and uh, critically, any conscious person knows that it's always a hidden agenda when you have white media and uh, the structures that uh, uphold white supremacy uh, publicizing something constantly. It's a hidden objective and a meaning behind it. Uh, In your estimation, because I don't think that the violence in Chicago is any different than the violence in Philadelphia, in New York, in Baltimore, or any urban areas across this country. Why is it that Chicago is focused in on, and why does it seem like every day it's a headline, 20 killed in Chicago, uh, 10 killed? uh, What is this? What, What, in your estimation, what is going on? First, I want to say, uh, uh, even when attempting to sum up or assess with, you know, with the state, with the system, uh, with white power, what it has at hand, mm-hmm. I always say that I, um, I, I humble myself to say that, you know, not only me, but our people, we, we, we not, are not even, even uh, capable of fathoming the, the, um, the entire agenda that this system, you know, that, 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 that uh, it has at play for us or what it, you know, what it has done, uh, done to us. And I'm saying that to say that it's a, it's a whole... Um, Cause a lot of times I think we have a, um, we take, we try to take a position to say, well, this is the reason the system is doing this so on and so forth. But this is a machine that, that I mean, that, 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 that it's cut from a whole different type of cloth than, 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 than um, that of African people historically. Um, but with that being said, it's always, amongst other things, murder, murder, and may, murder, money, and mayhem. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's on the system's mind all the time. And it's, it's, it's um, and also, it should be put in context, too, um, the, the, the quote that Malcolm X said, that even in cases where people attempt, attempt to comply or lay down for the system, this system is so parasitic that uh, it would say, or uh, people would say, well, master, have, have, have I done everything for you? And this system would say, no, no, no turn over. So people, we, should, we, we, we need to, I mean, that's hard for a lot of people to conceive, but put in context, this is this is a parasitical system. As Field Marshal George Jackson, uh, George Jackson of Black Panther Party said, Capitalism is a parasitical system. It's a parasitical politic. It's a blood-sucking system. It's a blood-sucking politic. Uh, with that being said, Chicago, though it's, it's, a, uh, it is, it's a it's a microcosm, or, or but maybe I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with the term Chirac, you know, because that's the term that a lot of people have an issue with. We we take the position that that um, add on to the old adage that says that God created Africans and America made Amer- God created Africans and America made niggers. We add on to that, that this system, that the, the mayors and the machine have manufactured Chirac. So but, um, the, the, the fact is, as you just stated, my brother, this is happening in every colonized community you know, throughout the country, not uh, yet throughout the world. But let's go with the, the fact that they get the spotlight on, on, on Chirac. Okay. Um, Cook County, when Chicago was in Cook County, uh, at one time, and that number is fast, uh, fastly uh, decreasing, was per capita the largest county of black people in the country. Cook County Jail uh, serves as the largest um, uh, county jail in the country. Though California has the largest largest prison population, but Cook County Jail is, is uh, the largest uh, jail uh, in, in, the, in the country. You have no, no, um, a lot of the, the black or, uh, a lot of the black organizations are based based here in the city of Chicago, um, and even the highway at uh, the I fifty seven. Uh, it's been noted that it's geographically uh, beneficial to the system. It's, in fact, it's known as the heroin highway. It's, a, it's, a, uh, it's able for a lot of uh, the drugs to be dispersed, and which and something, another factor that many people, you never hear uh, the, uh, the, the media make mention of, is the cartel's presence uh, in the city of Chicago. In mm-hmm. fact, there was a movie, um, El Chapo, um, that the movie was allowed to play, be played throughout the country, but they refused for the movie to be played in Chicago because it would draw the direct coalition about the, uh, about the, the cartel's presence in, in, in this city. Um, so there are, there are a number of different dynamics at hand, you know. And also, 
the, uh, what many people euphemistically refer to as gentrification, which opposition is the land grab. They're pushing us up out of here. And, and but again, to reiterate what you said, this is happening to our people. You know, what I'm saying from Memphis, Tennessee, Philadelphia, New York, you name it. But uh, um, it's, it's a it's a it's a uh, it's another direct contrast is that at one time Chicago, and still to, to, to uh, still to this day, was one of the top segregated cities, excuse me, cities within the country. And it's also it was also noted for its structure, structure in various religious institutions, even down to the street organizations. And one of the things that uh, one of America's policies that when it comes to Chicago, Africa, Afghanistan, one of one of, one of America's policies is to create chaos and then restore order. And that's and so it's, it's, you've seen you've seen a blatant contrast that a lot, that, that a lot of the organizations have been dismantled strategically. They have they have targeted certain individuals who have who. We have backbone, we have a structure, and you've seen, you seen a blatant fallout that, that's happening. You know what I'm saying? What a lot of people call this, um, I hate this term that they use, this whole so-called black-on-black crime. But these are just uh, some of the effects, and it's, it's intense. You know, again, I, I mean, on a day-to-day basis, I mean, if you, if you, uh, prior to you calling, you know, you, I mean, the gunshots, the, the uh, police sirens, the ambulance sirens, it's, it's, it's all day, every day. And so it's a war zone. But as you said, it, it, uh, so many other communities, it's the same, it, it, it's the same, it, it's the same case, too. Jim and Fred, listen, you, you, your work takes you into our communities, into the streets. You're talking with the young people. You're talking with the, the whole spectrum, the old and young. The weapons that are in our communities, uh, sometimes some of our people can't get a finger on how these weapons are getting into the communities because we don't produce them. How are they? Uh, Chicago is one of the main ports in this country, land ports. I, I want to read from this DEA report in a minute dealing with the drugs. But before I get to that, talk about the weapons that are in our neighborhoods. Uh, where are the young people getting their hands? Who's funneling these weapons? I, I know it's coming from law enforcement, but you can't, or law enforcement has a hand in it, but you can't say, you know, it's like an unseen hand. But but talk about, from your estimation, these weapons in our community. What is going on? Uh, that that contradiction, that issue, is is so blatant to the point that um, I'm, I'm hesitant to even use the term unseen hand. Okay, it is so it is so blatant. Um, what's happening? Um, the uh, like. Uh, Inglewood is on south, 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 south side of Chicago. Inglewood and North Lawndale. North Lawndale is on the west side of Chicago. These are two of the um, most disenfranchised um, communities in Chicago. It's like a whole different world from places, uh, like, you know, Hyde Park, a uh, uh, place where University of Chicago resides at. Uh, it's like a whole different world. In fact, this is we talk about Chicago and Chirac, the tales of two cities, two, uh, two totally different dynamics. Um, but in the Inglewood, North, uh, North Lawndale, it's, you'll be hard pressed to get a, a Uber driver to come pick you up or a taxi cab or a piece of delivery man. But you, 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 you find no problem on, on, on a weekly basis, automatic weaponry, um, literally dropped into the hands of children. Literally, I mean, dropped in the hands of children. Um, there's, in fact, there's a young, a young guy that's on YouTube. That he had to move out of Chicago because there's a threat on his life. He talks about his involvement in the streets, and he talked about the police would literally come wake him up to tell him to come out there and pick up the uh, pick up the weapons. You know what I saw? I, I saw that. But go ahead. Yes. I saw that. Yes, and he talks about how he went to gun ranges with, with white men. They, and the type of weaponry he was describing, people who were in the military would say, "Whoa, what did you? What, how do you know about this? What, 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 where do you get this from?" It's um. The type of weaponry is, is, is mind blowing. Uh, you, 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 um, the cho- I mean, like little children that you can uh, that you, you can talk to in the time that they receive them, and it, 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 this, it, this conversation should not be disconnected from other uh, tentacles of how the, uh, the system is attacking us. For example, um, there was a release by um, Nick, uh, Nicki Minaj, just uh, one of the. Uh, one of the pad pipers for this system is, it, and it, when I talk about not using these terms, uh, even the, the music should be put in the context of 
propaganda bombs that are being dropped on our people, and our children in particular. The time is they showing them the, the, the type of music they're playing to them at what time. There was a release uh, by uh, Nick, Nicki Minaj, and they had uh, it, it glorified it, it, it uh, the, the violence in Chicago and Chirac. It glorified it, pushed it, and encouraged it. And shortly thereafter, I think three or four days later, on 59th and Normal, this is all, this, again, this is in the Inglewood area, uh, there was another uh, quote unquote railroad train robbery. And these, these, this is in particular Norfolk, Norfolk Railroad. They're, they, uh, uh, they, they've been continuously, uh, continuously uh, these droppings of the, uh, it's, it's, it's not uncommon here, about 100 weapons are fully equipped. Bullets, everything assembled. I mean, I, I mean you, I, you don't even hear them transferring um, microwave ovens. You know, everything is put together, fully assembled. Fully equipped, bullets, everything. So this this case, uh, shortly after the release of this record, the, uh, on Fifth Night Normal, the Norfolk Railroad, over 100 something assault rifles got dropped in the hands of children. Then you had another, uh, another one of the cases about uh, this, this pregnant sister uh, around this on expressway right there had got shot, like literally um, shot and murdered hours after you know after this after this drop. And I, I, when I say drop again, because it's an insult to refer to these as train robberies, because even the mainstream media that came out to report talking about these brazen trail robberies. They literally, it's a machine set up with these with weapons, weaponry is dropped into these children's hands. In fact, it was also exposed that they're not even noted that, that the weapons have been stolen, excuse me, the weapons have been, uh, the weapons are missing until the trains uh, uh, port back into uh, Virginia. So so you have, you have, a, you have a time lapse where you don't say, well, there's not, not even report that the weapons, the weapons are gone. And if that's not enough, it's not uncommon to hear about, uh, I think, a uh, uh, situation three days after U.S. President Donald Trump had announced he's, he's, he's bringing the feds in to Chicago, which is a contradiction, being the feds have been in Chicago. <laughs> uh, there was a case where uh, an agent was at a gas station in North Lawndale, the west side of Chicago, uh, left his car running at the gas station. And it was a, 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 a 17-year-old child supposed to get the car with uh, two bulletproof vests, and I, and I think nine, I'm not sure, sure, sure on the number, I think it was approximately nine automatic weapons in the car. Now, the, the, you know what I'm saying? They, they, the, child, the child was supposed to be locked up, but you know what I'm saying? But again, this, this, I mean, these, there are little, literally drops. And again, as we know, they're placed in the most disenfranchised community. And you have people come and say, well, why, would, why are the people accepting this, so on and so forth? Why are they, why are they accepting it? Why are they taking the guns? Again, you, if people are missing a major point. We say the most disenfranchised communities is similar to the tactic that was employed in um, Haiti, where the World Health Organization was doing tests with these pigs. And then when they, got, they got, when they were complete with the test, they dropped the pigs in the most starving communities. And, that, and, and, and it was later on, after people were eating the pigs, the male children were being, were, were being born with large breasts. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so people say, what, what's the connection? What, you know, uh, why certain things are being dropped in? What type of communities? And so on and so forth. It's a machine. It's strategic. What's happening uh, to, to our people, to our communities? Uh, we going to, well, no, we, I'm going to take a break now. I'll take a break in a few. Let me read from this report to get you to expand on something that you mentioned about, uh, five or 10 minutes ago, talking about the cartels, uh, Chairman Fred. Let me read from this p- report, a brief, uh, paragraph from the, uh, 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 2014 National Drug Threat Assessment from the DEA. The DEA's 2014 National Drug Threat Assessment found that while Afghanistan is by far the world's largest producer of heroin. It largely lends its heroin to markets in Europe and Asia, while half of the heroin found in the United States comes from Mexico, up to 39% uh, in 2008. Now, something I want to mention, too, because some of our people don't connect the dots. You know, we uh, this country has been fighting in Afghanistan, supposedly fighting, but we see that Afghanistan is the world's largest producer of heroin. All of that ties in. That's why the United States is there. But let me continue on this article. The Sinaloa, the Sinaloa cartel's near monopoly on the drug trade in Chicago has led to skyrocketing levels of violence among lower-level drug gangs throughout the Windy City and left drug enforce- enforcement officials in the Midwest struggling to catch up. Uh, according to this DEA report, 
they supposedly know exactly who's bringing the drugs in. They don't mention uh, the United States involvement in it. They just talk about Mexico's drug cartels. Uh, that kind of uh, coincides to what you were saying uh, a little while ago, Chairman Fred, about the Mexican cartels involved, heavily involved in what's going on in Chicago on violence and pushing dope. Uh, talk about it. You, um, as I said earlier, when we talk about these different contradictions, these different attacks, these different issues, it's imperative that we um, draw the connection or attempt to draw the connection, you know what I'm saying, from the, um, the, trans- the, the, the transportation or lack, lack thereof, you know what I'm saying, with, with our communities, the education or lack thereof, um, uh, education, you name it, you know, again, every, everything is political. And the, the media's role, the media's role, and also the propaganda. The, um, you, 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 if you, 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 you would be hard pressed to find any reference of acknowledgement that the cartel exists in Chicago, um, as opposed to say, uh, like there's a case in this re- recent uh, Memphis, Tennessee, where they had brought um, this big case. Uh, they, 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 uh, there was an alleged drug pipeline with this with um, a former Compton uh, Compton police officer, Reggie Wright Senior and Reggie Wright Junior. And they were talking about the whole dynamic about the cart, the cart, and doing the indictment. The cart, you heard mentioned the cartel, reference to the cartel, similar to former director of the FBI J Edgar Hoover's position about re, uh, refusing to even acknowledge that there, the mafioso had existed, and that, um, in fact, he went. They went years on said that there was no such thing as the mafia in, in, in the United States. You see a similar tactic being employed. With this dynamic, you know, and with, you know, as, as you mentioned earlier, even with the Sinaloa, Sinaloa cartel, which is the, um, more the, uh, at least uh, southern Mexico, um, and so I want to say I want to emphasize that because it's a, um, cause a lot of people when they hear these different contradictions, people uh, resort to a reactionary, just a simple race dynamic, just say the entire Mexicano community, so on and so forth, similar to that doing the mafioso, the entire Italian community, but there's a certain element. You know what I'm saying, and the, 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 the state. And if, you, if we trace it back, uh, and, and historically, it's always a, a, a state-made dynamic. You know what I'm saying, that, that, that not only gives um, the green light. You know what I'm saying, for uh, transport, to move, to, uh, move drugs, weapons, so on and so forth. Uh, similar to like the Iran Contra, the contradictions. You know what I'm saying, the uh, Contras were not only given the green light, but they were funded, they were backed. Uh, matter of fact, deep in that, created mm-hmm. by, by U.S. imperialism. You know what I'm saying? So if we, if we check our emotions, as opposed to our emotions check us, you can see the pig's hoof prints on all of these dynamics, and as opposed to us having these reactionary responses, when we say we get these catchphrases like, you know, crime in Chicago, crime was, was the killing in Chirac, and automatically seeing these imageries of these 16, 17-year-old, you know, black children with dreadlocks, you know, as opposed to saying, wait a minute, there's a whole different dynamic. And we talk about such co- contradictions as cartels, so on and so forth. Um, not like the days of old when people hear terms like, you know, gang, you just think like these individuals on the street. This is infiltrated in every dynamic, the court system, the school system, the media, you, you, uh, you name it. it it's tentacles uh, uh, impact every apparatus, every genre. You know, and, you, and, you, and, and, and the... The advantage to the ruling class and the disadvantage to the people is the non-acknowledgement. You know what I'm saying? You, again, you never even you you hear gang, gang, gang. You ne- even when you hear when there, there, there are situations happening in Chicago, uh, even to the case a few months back on 40, around 43rd Ashton, when there was um, the police was shot in an area that's known for the, cart- the, the cartel's connection to, to, to the state. Uh, when the police was shot. There was, there was a refusal. There was never, a, uh, even though the community knew, or the, uh, it was rumored that the police had supposedly made a bad drop to the cartel, so on and so forth. However, there was never a, 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 a acknowledgement through the, by the media or any other ruling class entity that it was just in the cartel's presence is in the city of Chicago or Chirac. Mm. <laughs> Richard, you uh, go ahead. Yeah, and I'll take a break yeah, after you jump in. Yeah, go ahead. Well, uh, and what I wanted to do, uh, do um, Chairman Fred, was um, once again, you know, what, uh, you know, you kind of touched on it because I think it's important for us to understand, as you said, it, so that we wouldn't be reactionary. To, that understand what it, that it is a system, right? Uh, and as you say, a ruling class system. Um, could you again, you know, so that the audience is clear and we're clear that 
the elements. You mentioned the school of law enforcement, that these are bureaucracies to the system that is supposed to accomplish a certain end. For for you in Chicago, what what do you see that end is? And I, you know, just just for clarity's sake, because I think it's important for us to be clear about what we're um, looking at, and as you say, the disinformation or lack of information when it comes to events that are occurring. It's it's bleak. It's just bleak. It's it's, it's, it's it, um. I, I mean, I, I um, just said the funeral the other day, and, 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 and to, uh, like funerals is, is every day, you know, is every day, all day. It would not surprise me if the uh, city of Chicago um, dispersed U-Haul trucks and hearses to literally come knock on our doors to, you know, tomorrow and say, listen, haven't y'all got the point? Y'all got to get up out of here one way or another. Mm. To, to, to the black community in particular. I mean, I mean, every, I mean, Beating around the bush, these cold words. I'm talking about the the, 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 the increased uh, property taxes. Property taxes to, to I me mean, to the to, to the point that even high paid slaves like uh, NBA player Dwayne Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Wade, the, 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 uh, he even talked about he, uh, the threat of losing one of his homes, right? You know, so right outside Chicago because of the property taxes. The, you know, in fact, Cook County has held the, the highest uh, taxes. Uh, I believe also in in the country, and it is constantly. I mean, with the the the, uh, the strategic time, the uh, trumped up. I mean, tickets and uh, uh, from, from vehicle tickets because uh, you have a problem. Uh, it's very few people can even drive now because it's 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 not uncommon to see come out and see the the, the, the boots placed on on people's cars throughout the community. They uh, coming through areas. Just blatantly giving people, uh, if you walked on the wrong side, you rode your bicycle on, on the wrong side of the street, giving these tickets, you know, just blatantly pushing the people up out of here. And even the attempt for people to, to, to purchase homes or rent, there are so many guidelines set up that the uh, black community in particular can't, you know, saying, can't, uh, can, can, can't purchase homes, can't rent. And it's similar to a tactic, uh, it reminds me of a tactic I read about that he had employed in um, the uh, 50s in the Hyde Park area. In fact, when Mayor Daly Sr. was then the Cook County Treasurer. They, it was something to the fact that they um, a law that you have to have insurance on insurance on your home, but simultaneously they told the insurance brokers refuse to sell insurance to the black community. So it's a, a, a catch twenty two situation. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. So these are different type. Of, I mean, day to day situations. They, you know, that's another tax coming in this Wednesday where anything any. Uh, drinks with uh, sugar, a, 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 sugar, a certain amount of sugar in the, in the, in the drinks, they have to, they're going to place this tax on it that the, that the tax would really be more than the actual drink. And some people say, well, we shouldn't be drinking this stuff anyway. But when you come to our community, that's the only thing that they have for us. You know, uh, what's the term they use? These food deserts. You know, you know what I'm saying? We, a lot of us think vegetables is uh, a pack of cherry now later, you know, cherry candy. So these are the type of policies and practices you know, what I'm saying not to even mention about the um, the rampant police terrorism. That, uh, again, not police, not police brutality, but the police terrorism that, you know what I'm that that's constant through our community. You know, um, a, lot, a lot of people became familiar with familiar with the, um, what is referred to as the black sites. Again, the black sites. These are little, literally underground stations, underground underground areas where the police themselves admit they don't have to adhere to any sort of um, protocol or procedure. Well, you just, you know, they, they, they was known as the jump out boys, masked policemen, you know what I'm saying? And many, many, many who direct, connect, uh, who admit their connection to the cartel, um, ex, you know, uh, Marines, military, uh, uh dropped, in, dropped inside our communities and they just come and snatch you up. You know, your, your, your loved ones, your family, nobody knows what happened to you. And many people became familiarized mm-hmm. with this when a white individual was taken down to the black sites, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't beat, but that, the fact he was taken there, that's when you had an uproar between you know a lot of the um, quote unquote liberal press, you know, about what are what are these black sites? But the name itself tells you what's been going down all the time. In fact, there's reports of when they did a big sweep on one of the major street organizations that was in Chicago, it went to, uh, the GDs, uh, formerly the Gangster Disciples, they do to be um, recognized as uh, the growth and, growth and development. There are sections of them that were snatched up in 1996 that to this day people have never seen again. You, uh, uh, Chairman you know, Fred, you're you, talking about the uh, those. Uh, Areas where they were torturing people that uh, they uncovered in the media, supposedly it became a revelation that uh, it was torture camps similar to uh, yes. Abu Ghraib, Abu Ghraib over there in yes. the. Okay. And they still, mm. they, they still exist. Yeah, they, they refer to yes, black sites. Yes. Okay. 
and 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 and, and, and just to, to reemphasize the point that you make, because even in Philadelphia, when you talk about and and you touched it as I see it, the whole. Uh, apparatus of gentrification, the movement of black people out of these communities that we um, it has have historically had to fight to get in um, with all those um, regulations that were in place. And now that we were in, now our, through this here process of trying to move us out, uh, our moving us out in Philadelphia, you could see four, four or five different communities that they keep emphasizing the price, the price to live, I mean, the price of the housing, um, the the population that is coming in, and and people ask the question, well, where are black people going? And they're moving us. Um, we are moving, and they are moving us. And then the other laws that are um, put in place that that affect um, us who have who are below the poverty level or utilize any kind of public assistance. I, we just heard that here. Um, if you have they're putting a um, something a stature in place if you get federal assistance or, or or state assistance and you have a particular type of car you're to be questioned of how you got that car so the the laws are to emphasize to maintain and and push us out of these areas um so i i you know and that and and i think that's important for us to see that it is system, systemic it is a process so with the cartels um, feeding the drugs on one side, the legal, quote unquote, legal apparatus is using the economic stimulus to move us on the other side. Those who consider themselves um, not a part of the quote unquote criminal culture. Um, I, if I can, um, Elliot, I'd I just like to ask the chairman, you know, the work that you're doing with the um, in the prison era, how, how is that? Um, developing and and what what could you tell us about that? I noticed here in Philadelphia, you know, you're mentioning you'll be here um, next week that um, the Universal Negro Improvement Association is having a help our families, our family needs in relationship to the um, prison a prison effort. So, it, as far as your efforts in, in dealing with prisons, how is that going? And what you know, uh, what do you see uh, has been the positive outcome of that? It's a struggle, you know, and I, even we talk about the, the prison, the prison question, or better yet, the concentration camp contradiction. Yes. As, Mal, as uh, Malcolm X has said that, you know, America itself represents prison. And as Minister U.E.P. Newton said that, you know, talk about, you know, prison is a microcosm of what's, you know, the, the outside community. And we, um, we, uh, our mantra, our mantra, one of one of our mantras is free them, free them all. And it's not just in regards to that of the, those who are held captive in these concentration camps. But also to our, you know to make the connection to our people uh, to our people in general. You know, uh, but don't, don't we recognize the intensity, you know, the intensifying attacks and contradictions that are happening behind those walls? Uh, in response to that, we have a number of different uh, programs and campaigns, uh, ranging from what we refer to the, uh, the Harriet Tubman Code. That's where those who are fortunate to be able to come out of those concentration camps with their sanity and, uh, and be alive, that we make a commitment to make sure we reach back, to go back to reach for others who are held captive in those concentration camps. We also have um, the one prisoner, one contact. The one prisoner, one contact. That's what we say everyone in the outside community at any given time should be able to give us a status check, an update on some respective prisoner. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be, whether it be the Mumia Abu Jamal, the Move 9, um, uh, the uh, imagine without a means, uh, your, uh, your brother, the sister down the street, uh, the, those in those juvenile detention uh, detention centers, our people in general, and not draw for, as a foregone conclusion that someone is locked up today, that they are being treated humanely, or that they, that they even are al- alive. There have we there are cases where in Illinois, prisoners have been dead over excess of ten to fifteen years, but the state still receive resources of, uh, from, uh, from them uh, because uh, lack of accountability. In fact, one of the, uh, the, the former Fuhrer of Nazi Germany, Adolf Hitler, one of his initial ta- t- his tactics, uh, excuse me, he, he, the ones he initially gassed in the gas chambers was the ones they studied who did not receive any mail. This, in, in, that, in that spirit, the state studies who has contact because it's, it's, uh, uh, it's individuals we're doing. So these are different um Campaigns and programs that we have, and we tell we we, we don't we attempt with our work uh, not to um, detach um, uh, the the attacks 
as well as the, uh, 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 our responses to the attacks. In other words, we try to tie our survival programs, such as the, the Black Panther Party Cubs, um, Triple C's, the Children Community Cubs, every Saturday, we're right in the heart of the community, serving the people. And But at the same time, we give them information about somebody who's held captive and getting them involved in one prison, one contact campaign. And, uh, and also, their relationship is reciprocal. We call on those, the contacts we have held captive, any ideas that they may have. Although they're held captive, you know what I'm saying, they, they, uh, they, 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 some participation um, they us in, in involved in our struggle, struggling with us again to, make the, to, keep the, to keep this connection from those who are held captive to the outside community. We're going to take a brief break, and when we come back, you can join this conversation, too, by dialing 215-490-9832. That's 215-490-9832. Join the conversation with activists, organizers, the chairman, Fred Hapton, Jr. Uh, it's one call on hold. We'll pick you up right after the break. We'll be right back. tuned in to the black talk radio network for podcasts and live program scheduling visit us on the web at blacktalkradionetwork.com all insurance incorporated an african-american owned and operated insurance agency and business for over 20 years located at 231 southeastern road in glenside pa with other offices in germantown and west philadelphia call now for commercial insurance quotes homeowners insurance quotes automobile insurance quotes notary and tax services representing over 15 major a-rated insurance companies offering a discount on all notary services when you call in for a free quote call this number two one Two one five eight eight five two four four four. That number is two one five eight eight five two four four four. Two one five eight eight five two four four four. All Insurance Incorporated. Before your roof becomes unruly, call Dooley. Dooley Brothers, specializing in shingle, rubber roofs, gutters, downspouts, and vinyl sidings. Call for your free estimate today, 215-224-3882. That's 215-224-3882. Dooley Brothers Roofing, the roofing experts you can trust. That number again, 215-224-3882. 215-224-3882. Before your roof becomes unruly, call Dooley. Hey, did y'all see the stuff I posted on my wall? No, nah, it didn't even show up in my news feed. Man, I'm done with social media. All the injustice and brutality going around, and it's like they're trying to suppress our voice. We're trying to get the message out there, and you can't even share empowerment and what's going on around the country either. Mm-mm. Nah, don't be done with social media, though. It's a tool, and there is a place where we have a voice. It's a Let's Buy Black 365 social network. You do anything you want on any other social network. Post pictures, videos, status updates, share resources and community news. But on Let's Buy Black 365, it's a platform for us and by us to tell our messages. Whoa, that's like a digital underground railroad. What's the name of that site again? It's Let's Buy Black 365.com. Yeah, I heard about that. It's all about networking, and you get points, right? Yeah, the more you network network, post, and share, the more points you get. Plus, you get points for posting pictures, sharing information, attending community events, and inviting others to network with you on the app. Wow, that's all I need to know. I'm going to go download that app right now. Now, better yet, let me invite you so I can get some points. It's all about empowerment and solutions, y'all. Yeah, that's what's up. I'm all in. Let's do it. Let's share our stories. Let's buy black 365com RG Electrical Inspections provides electrical inspections for realtors, licensed electricians, and homeowners. Licensed and insured underwriter, serving Philadelphia and surrounding area. Call today, 484-268-9837. On the move. Assalamu alaikum. Free Mumia. Free Mumia. Free Mumia. Free Mumia now. Brothers and sisters, comrades, it's certainly my pleasure to be here. 
one of your state representatives from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I am ashamed to be a state representative in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania with a chump like Governor Ridge at the helm. I'm ashamed. But I wanted to come here today to let you know that some of us are not afraid. That even though we may be elected, we'll say what's on our mind. But we must understand that we're freedom fighters first. And that all the other things come next. That I'm a black man first, and then a state representative. I don't confuse the two. And I think it's time for us to wake up and realize and understand that you got a lot of us that are willing to go to battle because the freedom ain't going to never be free unless we take it. There's too many of us sitting around thinking that it's going to come to us on some damn silver platter. Wake up, you fools, and understand this man has no respect for you. None. None whatsoever. And they will continue to do what they do to Mumia only because they feel that you don't have no heart. Well, let me just say this to y'all. I want to send a message to the FOP. I want to make it loud and clear so there won't be any mistake about what's being said today. And I'm saying it as a black man in the city of Philadelphia and not as the state representative. I ain't scared the hell of y'all. And I'm not going to let you intimidate our people either. That's over. So when you come home with some threat about you going to boycott every event that we have and you want to stop the people from coming to contribute their money, get the hell out of our way because we ain't going nowhere. The time has come for everybody to wake up and realize that this ain't no joke. We're not going to let you take Mumia's life. And we want to send a message to America that the death penalty has got to end. We're going to wipe it out the same way they did in South Africa. But they did it by power of the people. When Nelson Mandela stepped out of jail and threw his hands up in the air, he was a strong brother. After 27 years being in jail, it didn't cripple his spirit. And I want to let all of you know that come from all across this country, you got some brothers and sisters in Philadelphia that are willing to rumble no matter what and ain't afraid of the Philadelphia police, the national police, the FOP, and all the rest of them that come together with it. In my conclusion, I just want to say I know the time has been rough today, but a lot of y'all need to know what this looks like for many of us here in the city of Philadelphia. Governor Ridge is getting a message again. Not only did those 115,000 calls go on, that's an underestimated of the number that have been calling, as an underestimated number of those who signed petitions, as an underestimated number of those who have come in and out of the city of Philadelphia from all across this country to give the kind of solidarity that's needed in order to make sure we free Mumia Abu tomorrow. We're not going to take this line down. And I know that Mumia, in his heart, knows that we're all with him. So brothers and sisters, we're here as freedom fighters and black liberation strugglers who understand the importance of who and what we are, and we ain't going to let no titles get in the way. Free Momir. Free Momir. Free Momir. Free Momir. No justice. No justice. As-salamu alaykum. From antiquity to the present, our people need to develop a new paradigm. It's time for an awakening with your host, Brother Elliot. Sundays, 7 p.m., Fridays at 8 p.m. for podcasting or live program scheduling. Hit us up at Time for an Awakening. Hey, welcome back to Time for an Awakening, and we're joined in conversation this evening with activist, organizer, the chairman, Fred Hampton Jr., is with us in conversation. And, uh, Chairman, are you with us? Still with us? Yes, sir. Yes, let's, yes, 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 sir. Let's yeah, go to you? let's go to the phones. We got a couple callers here waiting on hold. Uh, two six seven two six seven area code. What's your name? Where you calling from? Brother Timothy. Brother Timothy from South Philly. How are you, sir? How are you? Good. How's how's uh uh brother Reggie over there? I'm Richard. Brother Richard is good. Richard, I mean Richard. Good. Brother Richard, everything good? Yes, sir. Listen, listen, uh, Chairman, uh, Comrade. Much respect for the Black Panther Party, especially your father. I'm happy to see that you're carrying the legacy on, man. You're live and breathing, and you sound well. Thank you. Good thanks. Right yeah, on. Thank Re- Re- revolutionary love and appreciation. Thank you. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough. Uh, we say it's a tough act to follow, but we're going to try our best. And um, I'm honored and humbled. You know, um, not only be sort of chairman free, but also a cool and Jerry, and also honored and humbled to be able to serve serve the people. So thank 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 you. Thank the people in general for allowing me, better yet, for allowing us to serve the people. 
Yeah, brother, I'm, I'm told you're doing a good job. Um, brother, I'm going to bring this up here, right? And I'm going to take a look at Chicago, right? And I'm going to ask you, the National Center that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had in Chicago, right? And now I believe Mr. Farrakhan has obtained that, and he has that now. Is that correct, Chicago? Yes. To my okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. My question to you is, is that in that community, what is it like? Where the National Center is, uh, is it thriving with businesses, school, hospital, bank, bakery, or whatever economic empowerment helps the community to go through its trials and tribulations? And also I'm going to say to you that is the National Center secured in the area around it? Not. But I'm also going to say this to you that you can always tell about a community what's going on with its people. And if the economics, the education, and the think tank of black people is functioning correctly, that means we're controlling our community. Now, my thing to you is that living in Philadelphia, living in an area that has been gentrified, like a lot of areas in America, and having the problems with people losing their homes, the raising in taxes, the gentrification, the racism, out of all that, now we could tell you, show Brother Richard that the propaganda they use in black communities that, oh, it's so bad there, the drugs are so bad there, the crimes are so bad there, that we can't even go there. But here, you, here we have gentrification in our neighborhood. We have whites coming and moving in here and setting up business. So it can't be that bad. That's a propaganda piece. So my question to you is, brother, is, is it possible that in Chicago, where activists like you are, or some type of nationhood group like you are, that we can control that community and whatever it is that's negative, kick it out? Because I'm going to say this to you. In Philadelphia, in Philadelphia alone, uh, Richard and Elliot tell you, some of the baddest corners in Philadelphia, whether it was the Ten Line in North Philly, 25th and Diamond, whether it was the Zulu Nation, whether it was the Barbary Coast in West Philly, whether it was the uh, whether, whether it was the Empire Game in West Philly, or whether it was 20th and Carpenter or the Road or 50th and 70th, these people are now in these communities that were so bad. They were fighting amongst each other. That's a part of the propaganda. That's a part of the brainwashing. We were fighting each other. Black people were afraid to come in their own community, their own community at times. But now you have white men who control the street because he now has those communities which were the best parts of the community, and he has them, and he has turned it around. So I'm, I'm asking you, with all your experience being around probably conscious brothers and sisters, how do we go back obtaining and having our community? I'm going to say this. Elliot and I had a conversation not too long ago. And a lot of people could say, well, I'm a black man, I'm a black woman, I can't get a loan, so I, so I, this is my community. Uh, you know, I, I can't get the public school system to help me to, to bring about public education, to build back the school that they tore down. But me and Elliot had a, had a nice conversation not too long ago. At one time, black people didn't ask anybody for money for, from the government. They came from a segregated South set up business, whether they start off having a fish store, whether they start off with shoe shining, whether they start off with newspapers, whether they did a variety store, whether, whether they have, whether they sold chickens, whatever they did, black people learn how to make it, selling dinners out of their house before they started the restaurant. So my question to you, what direction in which we go to bring that kind of situation back, to have a public school in your neighborhood where your, your, your son or daughter has to walk out of their neighborhood? Okay. At one time, as bad as the gangs were, you had some gangs that would make sure that some elderly were protected. We need to bring about all that kind of security. And as, and, and as, and as bad as things were, the nation of Islam had a, had a program to bring those criminals in and turn them around. The Black Panther Party, like you know and like I know, okay, they were educated men. Your dad was – they were they were bringing in people, men. And, and turning their minds around. The direction is already here. It's listening to the people. I want to know how to get that thing back. Because we're amongst the enemy. They don't want us to have that. But he ain't that powerful. He ain't that powerful when he's controlling your mind like that. Let's be for real. If we have a census 
I listen to Reggie, uh, listen to Reggie's, uh, um, Brother Elliot's program. Sometimes I might listen, not, might not say nothing. When I hear him talk to people around the country, these people are enlightened. And I'm telling you, I want to know what direction do we go? What is the Nation of Islam doing in Chicago? What is the other new organizations that actually are doing in Chicago? What is Bobby Rush doing in Chicago? I'm going to say, look, we can also talk about Philadelphia. I mean, Rich and I can tell you what we think the people of Chicago should be and Philadelphia should be doing. We're well, guilty of a lot of things, too. Well, like, Philadelphia is perfect. It ain't no different than anything else in the United States. Well, let, let him address the, uh, what you asked, uh, Tim. Tim. Yes, you can, you, 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 uh, brother, you came with a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, let me see where I can pick going, where I can, uh, where I can go at. Uh, you mentioned oh, uh, early on, uh, the National Center of National Islam, like the, um, they, the, the, um, the different, even with the Muhammad University, they, they, those, 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 they have those institutions there. And I, I also, to add on to something you said too, um, a, a majority, a lot of even black organizations are, are based in the city of Chicago. However, these different areas, as well as you know, no, um, uh, no, no areas and no organization, no nothing is immune from what's happening here. You know, say what's, what's, what's happening here, and I'll say, I'll say here again. I, I know to some degree, or in, in the near future, to some degree, it's happening in every oppressed community. And these, the, the, the attacks, to, I mean, that, that that are spilling over into uh, hitting you know, every uh, this, this challenging the race as well as the class contradiction. And but the deal is, when it happens, like uh, I mentioned, uh, just, 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 just talking about this yesterday, when you have a situation like this, go to race contradiction. When an uh, uh, elderly white woman has a purse that's of North by the Comiskey Park, where the uh, Cubs baseball team plays at, um, that, that, that that was solved they, 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 with the uh, matter of hours. So these, so you see again, do, you know, say that it's, a, it's, a, it's a different type of conversation that's happening now. Because you know, uh, again, with this being one of the top segregated uh, cities in the country, there was a certain time you say, okay, well, that's uh, that's the bad area over there. Don't go through this. Don't go through this. Don't go through uh, this part of the West Side. This part of the South Side, so on and so forth. But you see that uh, the the, the, the contradictions are impacting everywhere, every arena. And so, with that being said, because we say, uh, Chairman Fred's always say, nothing all bad, nothing all good. So this, this these 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 contradictions are, are opening the door to to, to the possibility. And even um, of, of uh, merging uh, uh, principal coalitions and scientific relationships, we uh, 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 similar to that, like the late '60s, where even uh, contrary to a lot of people have been told, it was Reverend Jesse Jackson, it was actually Chairman Fred Hampton who organized the Real Deal Rainbow Coalition. But the t- you must be, it must be put in context of the timing where he was able to win the various brothers and sisters from the various street organizations, and able to, you know, say to uh, uh, have a, uh, to, to win certain forces. Uh, 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 certain forces, uh, uh, the, uh, the, young, um, the young lords, Cha Cha Man, and so on and so forth. But the conditions have to be right for these type of conversations. And, 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 and we say that people become conscious or get involved, get involved in work, or even form, get together. Um, not just uh, it just doesn't come out of a, out of a vacuum. People become conscious, or get, or get together one, one of three ways in response: inspiration, aspiration, or desperation. So the, the, the desperate times are, are, are here, def, definitely. Something else you had mentioned, um, so you, you came a lot. Um, oh, about the reason you, you mentioned about there was a time where, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of organizations, uh, organizations didn't have to, you know, have to, you know, have to put out, you know, have, they didn't have to receive resources from, you know, saying from uh, uh, the state or any other entity. That's something that should be inclusive. When we talk about this war, this this wage on our people. The whole that the, the question about resources, finance. Uh, you know, the deal is we are we are being out resourced. Our war chests are, are bare. You know, so I, it's, I mean, I'm embarrassed to tell you about. You know, I mean, I had to go hop on public transportation or something. You know, do some protests and you know, you know, some forces get locked up. That, that's they hitting us hard with that, and we have been, with that we always been hit hard. So this ain't nothing new. However. They, the system is we being out resourced, out funded by these 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 state sanctioned spokespersons, these state sanctioned spokespersons, the the, the the creation of these GMOs, these government made organizations that serve a, a number, a, a myriad of purposes. Um, amongst, amongst those, even confusing the people. This is something that, that's a big conversation they're talking about in Ferguson 
know, we like we like to call Mike Brown Town about the, the different the the, the 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 poverty pimps that were funded and created. You know, say so again, and the 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 the, the, the moral lives of people, and a lot of times, the people get hip to them. You know, what I'm saying your, your your morale is down. You, uh, you say, well, I'm not gonna get involved in the movement, but actually, not these, not these different entities entities were actually never the movement. So that's a, that's something that has to be addressed and acknowledged. Because a lot of times we have a reactionary response. We say, well, at least such, at least such and such is doing this. At least such such is, is there. At least such such is on the news. They, they dude, in Chicago, they have an actual person that is literally. On the police payroll. I mean, he literally works for the police. And every time you see something happen, this person is, is held as a community activist. I mean, it's it's, it's, not, it's not no. Uh, you you don't even have to go Google. He is literally on the po- literally works for the police department. And every time, but you have a you have some people that actually consider this individual a community activist. And it's so many of these individuals and organiz. And, and I'm using this term loosely. Organizations that the University of Chicago and the likes have created. To continue with the legacy of organizations that have a, that have a track record or, or, or sincere people that are really out here, you know, getting down with the situation. They have, the University of Chicago literally sits up there and like petri, they get petri dishes and produce individuals who may have a similar name. They had a, they had, they had, they, they, uh, some years back, they created a group of individuals who literally, these clones literally try to look like us. They wore the same hats, you, you name it. They, 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 they and it's been a they didn't try they didn't try to a thousand different times. We gonna stay we gonna stay we gonna stay the course. We gonna be consistent. But again, again, a sad reality is we are out resourced. Okay, you know now my brother, uh, yes. now my brother, I'm gonna stop you right now. This is one thing that Elliot and Richard and myself talk about all the time. The with the sellout politician. The sellout politician let developer come here. The sellout politician who it was to destroy public education. The sell-up politician who goes against his own people and wants to arrest them or have them locked up for taking bribes and deals, and they turn around and he or she gets locked up for the bribe and deal, and they look like me and you. See, that's the other problem. There may be the good politicians, they're far through, but we got the majority of the sellout politicians that don't wear the uniform that look like me and you that's against us. Tim, thank you for your call, man. Right. Yes, indeed. Uh, we got an open open line at 215-490-9832. That's 215-490-9832. Go ahead, Jimmy. Uh, I was just going to ask his last point. Okay. Especially. Especially, it's not, not just in Philadelphia. I, I liken the um, machine politics uh, to Chicago with the whole. Uh, it's, 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 it reminds me a lot. Uh, that's why I speak about that a lot when I'm, when I'm whenever I'm in Philadelphia. But especially where um, the question of the, the black uh, places, metrop- metropolis, you know, some places like Chicago and the likes. The question of neo-colonialism can never be negated. In other words. Mm-hmm. Um, White power disguised in black faces. That, that's that's something we that we can never negate. And we 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 have been criticized. So we into the Black Panther Party clubs for calling the contradiction on a lot of individuals who people say, well, you shouldn't disagree with black people in public, so on and so forth. We are consistent. We call the contradiction well, on Uncle, not only on Uncle Sam, but Sambo, not only on the Gringos, but the Negroes. And whether these attacks come from Rockefeller himself or Rockefeller Records, we don't cut no corners about it. And that's that's something that, again, in place where you have a black population, that's something again we cannot afford the luxury to negate. And I'm gonna say this too: I think we should be. I think we can save ourselves a lot of time. One, if we be careful, a lot of times we speak French at the wrong time. We saying we, we, we. We all don't have the same interests, and we need to come. We need to come to grips with that. The reality. Um, and two, I think sellout. We think sellout is one of the most overused terms in our community. Because the deal is, if you go back and check the track record, a lot of these individuals, they was they, they were in the maternity wards. They was on garbage. The, the state literally made them, and the warning signs be on be be be, be, be on the walls. So we can so so again, as the deal, we, we 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 look at their track record, their resume, so on and so forth. These groups that they, that they create now, all these organizations they create now. You you can't you can't do no you can do a community a community credit check you can't find no background it pops about nowhere so again a lot of these individuals are not even sellouts they have been groomed they have been birthed they have been do they have been produced in the petri dishes from University of Chicago and the likes. 
I, I like to add for full, uh, Philadelphia, it, it, for me, it seems the University of Pennsylvania is one of those uh, areas where these uh, individuals are, if they if they don't come out of, they're cultivated, they're brought back to cultivated and then brought back out. But you, yeah. you raised something, you raised something, um, Chairman Fred, that uh, I, we, we kind of have some discussion around, and that is the political system. So I guess the question I have, how do you view, do you view that um, the, in the reality that the, the political system is something that we who recognize um, the need for uh, the cultivation of power, and that might be stages, but that we should use? Or is it something that, you know, based off of you or the organizations you represent, that we should not be engaged in? Well, let me let me first just uh, we uh, stress that we 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 struggle to distinguish electoral politics from politics. Mm-hmm. A lot of times people say, "Well, Chairman Fred, you don't really be involved in politics." I say, "No, I beg to differ." Because again, we say that everything is political: words, terms, fashion, music. Everything is political. Now, the the, the process of electoral process of uh, politics, I do, um, like any other phenomenon, uh, I think it's, it's a case by case situation. We need to be coming in with some clarity. Uh, not not dealing with some sort of absolutes. Like, if, for example, when they had that vote or die campaign, um, Puffy Combs refused. We, 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 didn't, we did not allow him to cross uh, state line with that garbage. Uh, we, our position was that um, we up to Annie. We don't want you to take the position that it's going to be simply, you know, uh, it's a foregone conclusion that we just, we're going to vote or die. We hold people accountable. You know what I'm saying? In some, in some cases, it's embarrassing to say, but it's, if we're not in a position to hold people accountable. You know, it's a phenomenon that we can't we can't work. It's like the old the old, uh, the old saying, Minister U.P. News said, "Power, power is the ability to define phenomena and make it act in desired manner. Power is the ability to define phenomena and make it act in desired manner." So, like uh, during the era of chattel slavery, so Harry, so it wasn't a uh, absolute that Harriet Tubman would utilize the Negro spirituals. It wasn't absolute that Reverend Nat Turner would utilize the church. We have to assess these different phenomena and say, okay, can we def- can we define and utilize this phenomenon, or will, it, or, or will it flip the script, or will the state incorrectly define it and use us? So that that becomes the question of the day. You know, what I'm saying? How, you know I, I respect that. Yes, sir. I, yeah, that's. I mean, I, I you know because that that gives us the power to make choices in relationship yeah. to that uh, at the time, and definitely from the perspective of our self interest. Um, does yeah. this tool, if I, if I, if I, if we are we speaking the same language, does this tool really work for us? If we use it, yeah. will it work against us? Um, yeah. um, if we use it. Yeah. Let me grab uh, this call. 602. 602 area code. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yes, brother Elliot and brother Richard and good evening to the guests, the chairman. It's brother Marcus from Memphis. How are you, sir? All right. I'm mm-hmm. doing good. Yes, brother. You know, Chairman, what you say going on in Chicago, I live here in Memphis. It's going on here also. The same foolishness. And it's surprising, too, that you guys up here, you got a liberal uh, a Jewish mayor, uh, or Ram Emanuel, <laughs> right? We got this uh, state senator down here, a Jewish uh, uh, Cohen, you see? No, um, you know, you see, Tom's... We got to get sophisticated enough to use Tom doing them because Tom is in the business of Tomming. That's what Tom do. You see, we got to get sophisticated where we could use Tom too because you say occasionally the white man slap Tom around and kick him in the butt and then Tom get mad and he'll throw a bone through the window. You see what I'm saying? So we got to, you know, he treat, Tom treat, you know, the white man treat Tom bad too. You see, and remember now, the original Tom, right, was was, was he took the blows. You see? So we got to get sophisticated where we could use Tom. No, four hundred years is long enough to know. Okay, we have been in this country for over four hundred years, and we see what's going on in this country now. You know, so, Sir Chairman. I would like to ask your opinion and what do you think about us seriously now implementing Mr. Garvey's program? Because this issue is about land, okay? That's why they're moving us all over the place. You know, it's about land. And they're not going to let us get no total here. Look, 400 years, 
if there was any human relationship to be worked out with anybody, we could have worked it out in 400 years. Don't you think so, gentlemen? <laughs> Don't you agree with that? 400 years, if there was any human relationship. Don't you think we could have worked it out in 400 years? Oh, definitely. Okay, so they have no intention of working out anything with us. So we have to work out our way. So I would like to hear the chairman's opinion on us seriously now. Moving, implementing Mr. Garvey's program and go rejoin the mass majority of our people on the motherland. And later on we come back and deal with him, okay? But right now I think we got to retreat because we're not, as you said, we're in a desperate situation right now. We, in a, our people, we have, we, you know, we, we killing each other, and the system destroying us. So, you know, <laughs> we got to seriously think about Mr. Garvey's program. But I would just like to hear the chairman's uh, opinion on that, and I'll hang up and listen. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for your call, brother Marcus. Thank you, brother. Long, long live, long live, Marcus Garvey. Um, you, um, so I think it's important. Okay, um, that uh, we, we the, this system again. As I said earlier, uh, initially, that I, I dare not even attempt to fathom what what all the, the, the um, what what all this, this, this system has. In, you know, in, in, um, it's, what's at stake for us as a people? And um, land, murder, mayhem, money—you name it. Like even this, 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 the situation that's happening right here in Chirac, there's discussion about some some sort of bit, uh, some sort of trade route from Canada, Canada to Chicago. That, you know, that, that there are so many dynamics that, that I that, that, uh, benefits that this system has, you know, has in place uh, that, we, that we're not even privy to knowing all the information about. It. But, I, I, but the deal is also, I think it's important that we talk about. A lot of times we talk about these attacks. Uh, 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 we talk about like it's like it's what happened before. Uh, these are, are continuous attacks, and uh, historically, what are we talking about? Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black Wall Street, you name it. Whenever there has even been an attempt with our people to settle down and gain some land or do the quote unquote right thing, we just, we constantly, continuously are under attack. And, like, and I think, and, and, and uh, even when we reference in history, I think we should struggle. To use brutal terms or brutal realities, I kind of take issue with even the term that was known. They talk about uh, a lot of people left Mississippi in the South and they came to places like Chicago and the likes. The term "the Great Migration." I don't, I don't buy into that. We just, you know, that we just up and just left. I, I you know, I, 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 I'm cut from the school of thought that that you know, we, uh, our grandmothers and aunties and uncles and they were raped and killed and you know, forced up out of the, uh, uh, out of these places out of the South and. You know, in many cases, save the, save the money you know, uh, from the sharecropping, the so on and so forth. To, you know, to get these plots of land, and wherever we go, it's all you know. Saying, again, it's we are attacked internationally, internationally. So, so, and I don't, I don't want to see like a pessimist, but again, this, this will be inclusive in the conversation that, uh, about the past attacks as well as the continuous attacks. Um, and also, I think uh, we we. Should be cautious about even the terms. Uh, uh, the term "we." Sun Tzu said, in "The art of war, the cardinal principle of war of warfare, is to know thyself and know thy enemy." Especially in places I've mentioned, you know, um, well, with this contribution of neo-colonialism, uh, where they put these puppets in, 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 in our face, and, and all of a sudden, there are so many. I got, I got a saying. We got a saying. A lot of people are black when it's beneficial. And play Panther when it's profitable, and claim Cubs when it's comfortable. <laughs> I hear that. I hear you, that. So, it, so when the heat is on, you see so many people. Oh yeah, we 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 have to have we have to be. Chairman Fred told the revolution is a scientific art that must be perfected. That clarity, and it's an ongoing process, and it's, 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 it's not an absolute. So that whole dynamic about we just this we, it's a, it, it, I mean constant. Like one of the, one of the things we pride ourselves on uh, is, is, is coalitions, principal coalitions. Now there are some cases we have to we have, we have a coalition with certain forces on one case, and we, in, in, in some situations we say no, we back it, we, we can't deal with you on that. Respectfully, we we can't deal with you on that. So it's ever developing, and as opposed to this 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 um, broad stroke, this, uh, this generalization that we all together, and, and that's something we have to keep 
even conscious when we talk about these moves, these mobilizations, that all of us get together. It, it, we, we have to be real. Again, we have to man, have, have our ear close to the ground and watch this turn. We you know, uh, and be scientific about this, uh, about who, you know, who is who. And uh, even when I have certain meetings, meetings with certain individuals and certain forces, I, t- I, I see you on the battlefield. Now, it may be allies, it may be adversaries. Um, I don't, I, I'm armed with a politic that is able to distinguish a cousin from a comrade. It's one one thing that you you mentioned, uh, Chairman um, Hampton, uh, is the the point of that coalition. And one one thing that I guess I've been um, pushing for us and pushing for feedback to get clarity on is: Do we have a mechanism? Um, and I and I and I, I see using that colloquial way or that um, mysterious way, but is there a mechanism where these type of coalitions um, or individual interests? amongst us who have historically been colonized or historically of African people can be able to to assemble and negotiate from, as you say, from one one um, self-interest to the other. Um, I guess, and, I, and hopefully more clearly I'm asking, do you see that there is a mechanism where um, the variety of us and we, um, who have different interests can be able to come and sit at the table and say, um, today I'll, I'll support you, but on, on this, because it satisfies both of our self-interest, but tomorrow I can't support you um, because it doesn't satisfy my self-interest, but I'm still here with you to, uh, the day after to see if we can work on something else. Is there a mechanism in place right now where that can occur? Um, I, uh, I believe so, and I believe that, that I, I believe that our, our communities are pregnant with potential. I agree. I, I our, agree with that. Pregnant yeah. with potential. I believe that once we up to any it, it, um, uh, other things fall, you know, fall in the line. You know, like there are certain, like I was a few weeks, well, about a month ago. Um, this, this new black leadership uh, they convened a coalition of different organizations, and and it was it, it, there was some one thing I, I really one of the things I really admired about this when I went, went there there was some there was some even there were forces that who we had struggles with we, ideological differences so on and so forth however what, what was good about it there was some there were authentic authentic forces there and as opposed to a lot of these what we refer to as these uh, 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 GMOs government made organizations mm-hmm. and the conditions help breed that it's, 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 so it's, so you, so again so um, that's the whole term the whole dynamic about season of time you, we have to have our ear to the ground and watch the you know the the, the, the resumes so on and so forth and then because um, a sad reality is a lot of a, 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 a lot of times there are reactionary responses however once we stand up a, a, a certain forces stand up yeah. the, the stuff takes right in and and, and and this is out of self interest uh Elliot and and, and um Ch- uh, chairman Fred um because as a, a member of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and because of the particular history and I think because of the core value around and I call it core value around race first that structurally even though it's old and may have to have some changes it still possibly can comp- uh, um um what's that still possibly provide the opportunity where different um, organizations at different local, um, state, and national levels could assemble from their different authentic um, positions and at least have dialogue. That's that's I just like to throw that out. Not necessarily saying it's absolute, and I believe it, but just for a part of dialogue because I think that our history shows that we have done this many times in this hostile environment. And as you said, looking when we look at the turn of the 20th century, those kind of cooperative networks, negotiation uh, co- uh, coalitions were the reasons why we were able to be able to purchase those large land tracts, not as individuals, but as cooperatives. Not that we had the same interests, but we knew we were under the same oppression. And and I think that we need to find organizational infrastructures that could um, provide that opportunity, and that's why I wanted to just throw that out there as a you know offering and in, in, in thought anyway. Right, right on. If it, ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know. But on, <laughs> on, on the at this too, 
uh, uh, politics is like in all, like so many other things. Other things like like real estate, time and location. All this is, is, uh, is important, and it's like it's, it's, it's kind of like I tell. I use an analogy like a relationship. Some we can look back in our own uh, individual lives and say, well, man, this 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 could have been a good relationship. You know what I'm saying? Uh, only if I'd have been a little bit, little bit more mature, or, 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 or the location was better, so on and so forth. So uh, there be there may be certain. Uh, Entities, the dynamics that's 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 right, right in, in, in the right fit, but uh, 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 the uh, the other necessary ingredients. You know, what I'm saying they 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 they, they, not, they, may, they may not be to that to that point. You know, it's like it's, it's certain. We the, the, the Black Panther Party Cubs. We are an international organization. And uh, hold on, this phone is dying. On one second. Can you hear me? I'm still mm-hmm. here. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, international organization. However, there are certain uh, certain locales where I would say, well, we can't we, we, we can't we can't make this move right now in that particular area right now because you know saying uh, it's, it's, the, uh, it's not it's not tight enough. Our, our forces are not tight enough down there. This is pretty much I would like to. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's the so uh, the whole thing about time and all all the, and, and, and as I said earlier, it's bad but it's good because we are the intensity. A lot of times we see our people work work best under pressure. But we don't. Uh, we 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 are the intense attack. So we are. We definitely are always open. You know what I'm saying for you know dialogues on this, uh, 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 principal coalition. We always open for that. We encourage that. You know what I'm saying so. So uh, we 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 on deck. We on yes, deck. Sir. Yes, sir. Let me grab a call here. Nine nine one nine area code nine one nine. What's your name? Where you calling from? Nine one nine. Must have stepped away. Let's let's uh, let's let's go here. We'll take this call before we take a break. Six four six, six four six. Yes, brother Elliot, brother Richard, and to the extinct Cameron Fred. You know, Fred, I would just like to ask you: in Chicago, with all of the police brutality that's going on. What is in place, honestly, coming forward from the religious community with the fratricide that's going on against our people? Is there anybody stepping up in dealing with the blatant racism and, I believe, the murder of our people by the police? I think it's it's more or less the police that are doing a lot of these killings than who they say it is, gang members and um, things of that nature. Is there any real fight back at stake or, or, or is there anything going on that's attacking this systemic problem of, of brutality by these police? Resistance, resistance is happening. Uh, and as I said earlier, we, we, uh, we, we, we being out resource, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not saying that it's time to demoralize, but it's happening. But also, it should be, it should be noted that there are in the, that there are certain there are other there are certain entities that are complicit again that are that are complicit with this genocide that's happening to our people here. That, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that, that I mean, uh, and, 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 it, and it reaches outside Chicago. You go look at the, the, the benefactors of the charter schools. I mean, uh, Magic Johnson. You look at you look at the propaganda that that, that piece uh, uh, Spike Lee was in front of that that Chirac the the the, the, the run this this, this the, uh, uh, get this propaganda these children just killing each other up here negating any connection to the, the to the ruling class these so and that the, um, everything from them, the the, the contradiction about the, um, the the body organs the Chicago Chirac Chicago, excuse me Chirac it's been noted and this came out after Superintendent of Chicago Police Eddie Johnson. Uh, needed a, tra- uh, uh, a transplant for uh, a kidney transplant. Chicago, Chirac is the, is, uh, uh, or, or some of you still want to refer to as Chicago, is the number one port, for the, the largest place for the uh, organ transplants. It's been brought to the t- people. I mean, people in the community say it's not that coincidence. You have a lot of these people. I mean, these, these head shots. People being shot in the head. We had a case uh, about a month ago, a month and a half ago. A young guy, about 18, 19 years old, was shot, was shot and killed. One of his friends was supposed to be listed on his contact list. The hospital, Christ Hospital, south, south side of Chicago, they called his friend and referred to this guy by his nickname. 
uh, they say, uh, yeah, we we are uh, hit her. They say he's dead now. We want your permission. Then they call his parents. They say we want your permission to re- to get his eyes, his pupils. This, this ain't no. This ain't the movie Get Out. I'm talking about. This was this was what's happening on a day to day basis here. Mm-hmm. You know. But, 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 wait. Let me let me let me ask you this because I I understand all that. What role, honestly, do the Father Flagers, the Jesse Jackson, the Moss, and the rest of those pork chop chicken eating pimp preachers play in our our, our rebellion against this? Are, are are they standing up, doing anything to challenge what's going on, other than talking sugar honey iced tea? And waiting to get their um, pimp money. Let me request. Let me let me, let me let me put let me let me put a request to you. Let me put a request to you that on the case of Laquan McDonald, who was shot in uh, uh, excess of sixteen times by Chicago James Van Dyke and other Chicago police. Mm-hmm. It, don't, don't, just, let, let's not stop there. Let's look at the the, uh, with the Chicago Tribune. You can Google it. The Chicago Tribune had revealed the emails, the email correspondence, what was sent. From the mayor's office, Mayor Rahm Emanuel, go and pull it up. What act? What quote unquote activist? Who seen the film? But the sixteen shots uh, uh, when it went down. What stage protest that the mayor have set up to have to occur on the Gold Coast, right across from the, where the Cabrini Green Housing Project used to, used to be at? Today, pushed us up out of there. What even down to down to the details of even noting what color shirts that they wanted the activists to wear. And how this was done to take away energy from real, any authentic resistance. See, I want to. I'm saying it not to be vague with your question. I'm saying it to say because a lot of times when I say stuff, we say stuff. Oh, he come chairman for it. He paranoid. He come with this conspiracy theory. He the bad guy. We want to heighten the contradictions so the people themselves can see these injustices and also who's complicit with these crimes. I hope if we, and I don't, if we still around. And I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it to sound. Depressed or nothing, because there ain't no guarantee. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's going down. I mean, intense. I hope that we can, we are able to have some sort of, uh, like they had Nazi Germany, a Nuremberg hearing, a trial. And not only are the usual suspects, not only the role that the the mass Chicago, but the machine and the ones, the organizations and the individuals who are complicit with these crimes. But please go pull it up and see who's seen the film footage. Look at the timing when this movie, this, 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 uh, this fight. No, no, yeah, Fred, yeah. I understand. I'm just asking you to just say it and make it plain. Is there ain't no Cliff, anybody? Ain't no Cliff, is, Chairman, ain't no Cliff Nelson Chairman for in, 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 in this class. The deal, see, we want, we want this. The deal is we have to the, see if we get these Cliff notes. If we get these Cliff notes, we get, we, we, we want this reactionary, easy, you know, uh, 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 quick fix solution. We want to heighten the contradiction politically so we can see this. So when they come with it again, we can recognize and identify, you know, it's the same type of tactic, same type of organization. Because when I start, when I start, when I start, when I start going through detail, bam, 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 point, it's, we, try to, we want to look at this subjectively. This is a bad person. This is a machine that, that, that grabs, it's a certain prototype, a certain, that we have to become politicized to recognize. As soon as we see, wait a minute, this person on the news all the time, they're not working our interests. This one, this, 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 this what they funding all the time. This, this, this so say, basically, we have to, basically, what you what you're not saying is them Negroes and that and that white boy they ain't doing nothing to solve the problem of what's going on in the community other than running running their mouths. But you they're know, not supposed they're, to. They're yeah, but they, but, but they, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Richard, don't mm-hmm. make that. Don't make that statement. <laughs> When you know, when you know that they supposed to be the imaginary leaders, that they supposed to be the head Negroes in charge, you know that Jesse Jackson is closer to the sky daddy than anybody else in the eyes of them Negroes in Chicago. Cut it out, Richard. You but, know if you, but if you but accept you know the I'm point, being right? Yeah, right? But if you if you accept and 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 just for the dialogue, because I think uh, Chairman Fred raised this point. If you reckon that, if you, you accept the position that we're in a neo, we have a neo-colonial infrastructure that, and it is not a new thing. We've had a neo-colonial infrastructure from the time we've been here. If we track that, as, uh, um, Brother Marcus said, if we track that 400 years and at times we've had in our dialogue, there has been an infrastructure of people who look like 
who's supposed to speak in our interests, look like us, speak in our interests, who whose primary role is to maintain the control <laughs> of the populace <laughs> who is not supposed to. And in the end, the end game is for power, self-determination, and, and control of our own destiny, defining that destiny. But there's been an infrastructure put in place, um, sanctioned to do to whose primary role is not to let that happen. And yep. as we move through history, they put on different clothes. They might have wore bell bottoms. Now they wear skinnies. But it's the same person and the same role. That's that's what I take out of what the chairman is raising. Uh, hey, Jake, thank you always for your contribution, man. Have a good one, brother. All right. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, you call. Yeah, and, and, I, and, I, and we struggle. Don't get me wrong. This, I don't want to seem like I'm just giving like these stoic political analysis. It hurts, and it's, we 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 struggle against subjectivity. The, the, one of the one of the, the, the dis the disservices, one of the setbacks we suffer uh, about coming in and just just, just trying to you know uh, look at this or this is some uh, new contradiction, a new uh, uh, new way of attacking us. It's important that we we put this in a historical context. As brother, just, just point out, just say. This, who I mean, what I'm WVON radio, held itself as a black radio station. Chicago. I'm banned. I'm banned from this radio station. <laughs> Reverend Flager was the was the, was, was, was the host doing Black History Month. <laughs> so I see the, the white be on the wall, and I feel and I, so a lot of times we want to come and we want this quick fix solution, but as opposed to this white be on the wall, who is who? What's happening? If you if, if, if Cats in the streets use use this type of uh, that they, they may not use the term dialectical materialism, but they 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 have, they, they uh, if, if you see, see a bunch of crips, if the blood is talking about this is a great crip and they funding this crip to come speak for them, so the other crips say, wait a minute, this guy why are they funding this dude? Why is this dude speaking and the blood love this dude so much? <laughs> if the cats in the streets can relate to this 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 sort of dynamic. They don't come and say, well, would you, would you, tell us about uh, such and such person. How do you feel about him personally? They say, wait a minute. We have a, a way of looking at things. We, we clear that there's an adversary, that there's an antagonistic situation or, or, or a war happening. And so the, so the deal is we have to arm the people, to politicize the people, to heighten the conscience, the conscience, the contradiction. So when it because it's going to get more intense, when they come with your family members, when they come with relationships, different people do, do, cause the, who, who the state will raise up, you know, in, 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 the politics, the politics will be able to call the contradiction and see, like, I have very few disappointments. You know, so, uh, uh, see, I don't, not about, see, if you go to, like the brothers earlier say, what, what are you surprised about different forces? If you go to the pet store and you buy a goldfish and you put a leash on it and you bring it home and you keep one there, I don't understand why this, why this goldfish is not barking, why it's not protecting my home. <laughs> Oh, uh, Jimmy Craig. <laughs> you, you, you all about your surprise. <laughs> People say O.J. Simpson sold out. No, he didn't. You go back and look. It was a piece of O.J. Simpson. Even his childhood friend in elementary school told you how he related to the state. To the to the. When we say the state, we need to talk about the state's attorney's office. We to the police, firecom records. You know what I'm saying? All look at this propaganda bomb that this high price uh, uh, slave Z the drop. Look at how many people we get duped. <laughs> this this Jay Z, this this, this this Barack Obama of hip hop. Look at the people he that he have he have, he have corralled to get the dance their ways back to the to, to the gas chamber to self indict our people to self indict ourselves. There's something that we do wrong to say. Well, do you understand why the Jews are making it? We starving because they got credit. I, are you serious? <laughs> Look at the people who, who believe in that. Oh, Fred, the chairman is turning up the heat. Let's let's let me grab this call seven three one. 731 area code, 731. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, brother. This is Brother Danny. Hey, sir. How are you? I'm good. How you guys doing? Great, great, great. Good, good. All right. Um, man, I'm enjoying the show. Um, and, you know, I was listening, and, um, you know, I was listening to you what you were talking about with the guns and how they were um, being uh, dropped off. You know, I, I've heard of instances, um, especially right here in West Tennessee, <clears throat> excuse me, were um, gun ranges, you know, being broken into, people stealing guns, and police cars being broken into and people stealing, you know, guns out of police cars. 
But when you see these incidents happening, you know, you, you find that there are no repercussions behind them. It's just considered a theft. So I wonder how much of these things are somewhat organized to happen or allowed to happen. Mm. Um, I don't think it's that hard to trace a, um, a police gun or if it's been used. It's my understanding in a police gun that, that, that they have, they fire it off and they get the markings off of it in terms of the bullet. So if it's ever been used again, they would know. So I think a lot of this stuff is, um, you know, a lot of us want to look at some of these things as just happenstance, but, you know, you really can't look at it as happenstance. A lot of this is, is put in place to happen. Um, now I wanted to talk about, um, you know, how public policy, we've seen public policy for years have such a negative effect on black folk. And how do we shift that to where, you know, even though we don't have the political power that we actually need in terms of representation, but how can we put enough pressure on the people who consider themselves our quote-unquote politicians? How do we put the pressure on them to where they can put something together to fight against some of this public policy? I mean, I look at private prisons and how, the private prison industry is is a corporation, but it, it's also considered public policy because it's used to lock people away. But in my state, if you don't have 90% occupancy, the state is fine. So public policy is affecting me all the way around, and it's mostly in a negative way. So how do we put the pressure on these people that are, are putting these things into place to where we can change these things to where public policy actually, instead of it hurting us the way that it has for so many years, how can we change it to where it becomes somewhat beneficial? You know, I'm looking at how this, this opioid situation is going on. I didn't, I'm like, but why is nobody paying attention to this? They're putting a public policy together to help white people who've been strung out on pills and heroin those public policies weren't in place for us. So how do we put the necessary pressure on people in order to get things done to where black folk can realize the importance not only of their vote, but the importance of their money as well? Thanks for taking my call. Thank you, Brother Danny. Come in with a clarity. Come in with a clarity of just, uh, again, if the, the uh, 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 the last 20 years of public policy. That's, that's long we talk about the the, the, the public policy that's, that's been implemented on our people from that of child slavery to sharecropping to uh, whatever whatever different euphemism, the, 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 whatever nothing, whatever new slick sound bite the, the system may use, whether we Richard, uh, former U.S. President Richard Milhouse Nixon uh, campaign for law and order, whether it be some um, uh, 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 anti-terrorism omnibus act of uh, 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 Bill Clinton, uh, whatever, whatever. Term, historically, we, we can just anywhere through, uh, whether with the indigenous people manifest destiny. All these different euphemisms, these nice words and terms. Historically, what has been public policy with our people historically to come in with a clarity, so that you know, what I'm saying, and, 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 and go at one of the, with that clarity, and also simultaneously go at the, one of the Achilles heels of this system. And one of the Achilles heels of this system is what Malcolm, is what Malcolm X said, that America's democracy is not hypocrisy. It's a facade. It's a facade that allows itself to, that, 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 that provides the, 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 the uh, uh, arena for U.S. imperialism to tout itself around the world and uh, ask, have the arrogance to ask the scuba have political prisoners. It's an arrogance that, 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 that allows, that, that provides the arena for U.S. imperialism to question who has nuclear weapons. Of human rights violations. It's a facade. That's a, when the United Nations they started doing uh, arbitrary inspections in prisons. The world was up. They said, "Okay, we allow that." It was the U.S. that said no. What did they have to hide? Because it's a facade. They benefit off that. They they don't say they don't say words like uh, child uh, child labor. They use different euphemisms. You don't hear terms like political prisoners you know, and 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 uh, and, uh, 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 U.S. Um, Representative vernacular. You don't, uh, uh, you don't hit uh, 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 propaganda bombs. They call it love and hip hop shows for our people. 
So just even go in with a clarity. And then, with that being said, being able, being able to accept it, as what Fran Fanon said, to be able to accept the concessions without compromising your principles. We've got to be clear on our principles. What are we fighting for? To be clear on the history of what you're dealing with. This is a public policy, policy comes at the expense of the detriment of our people. The, the whole discussion about opioids now, with the, 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 you see the billions of dollars that's coming through the, the for the white community now, as mm-hmm. opposed to the, uh, uh, the locking up, imprisonment of black people. Yeah, they're getting them help. Yeah. They getting the help. It's big bucks in this. I mean, giving them help, resources. They fund it. Not only the, those who, who, who were on heroin, the, the, the way they're the way they're viewed, they're uh, victims. They're, there's a sympathy. There's a a, a, a human dynamic. There's a, there are jobs and employment, counselors, all these type of. You never heard about this when it comes to our people. <laughs> it's kind of like what Richard, uh, comedic genius Richard Pryor said. Richard Pryor said white people will come to the black neighborhood, and they'll see us out there in the corner with needles stuck in our arms and dope residue around our noses, and they'll say, "Hmm, that's a shame," and they'll go home. And their, their son comes on the front porch with a can of Budweiser beer, and they say, oh, my God, it's an epidemic. Could you imagine? Could you? Could anyone imagine if, if, there were, if these murders in, Ch- in Chirac, if it was white people? Could you imagine? What type of resp- response? If it was white people? Could, every day, I went to do a funeral at a funeral home in the morning. I ended up there being there all day. People pulling me to the side, Chairman, come say something for my, for my cousin. Okay, so this is my auntie, my grandmother, she was killed. This, my sister, my baby, baby. I ended up being there all day, wow. all day. It's to the point. Listen, I'm struggling with my. We, the, I don't. The, we don't accept this normal because, as a solid Shakur said, one of the things about being oppressed, you have to continuously remind yourself to be able to distinguish what's normal, and what's abnormal. We talk about our triple C programs, children, community, and clubs. One Saturday, we, two, three Saturdays ago, we right there after we get to serving the people. Gunshot, man, gunshots, they rang right, I mean, real, I mean, literally close by. When I went to go check up on our youth troops, that's our, that's our youngsters. The sad thing was, I looked, I, I, was, I went to go see them, and it, and it, it appeared that they were not even impacted. And, it, and it, that's the sad thing about it. Now, I know that it's embedded in there somewhere in their psyche that they impacted. But it, the sad thing, it appeared they were not. We're going to be paying the price for this for a long time. I don't know how long we're going to be around. I mean, I mean we, like we still paying the price from that Hiroshima, that crack, that crack that this, that this government dropped on us. We're going to be still paying, we're going to pay the price for this for a long time. But the deal is, we got to call the question. Chairman, how's your, how's your time? You You all right? Can we go a little bit uh, over, or are you all right? Can we go about another 15, 20 minutes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good, good, go. good. Uh, we're going to take a brief break, and you can give us a call in the time we have left at 215-490-9832. That's 215-490-9832. Get involved in the conversation with the activist organizer, the chairman, Fred Hampton, Jr. We'll be right back. You are tuned in to the Black Talk Radio Network. For podcasts and live program scheduling, visit us on the web at blacktalkradionetwork.com. All Insurance Incorporated, an African-American owned and operated insurance agency and business for over 20 years, located at 231 Southeastern Road in Glenside, PA, with other offices in Germantown and West Philadelphia. Call now for commercial insurance quotes, homeowners insurance quotes, automobile insurance quotes, notary and tax services. 
representing over 15 major A-rated insurance companies, offering a discount on all notary services when you call in for a free quote. Call this number, 215-885-2444. That number is 215-885-2444. 215-885-2444. All Insurance Incorporated. Before your roof becomes unruly, call Dooley. Dooley Brothers, specializing in shingle, rubber roofs, gutters, downspouts, and vinyl sidings. Call for your free estimate today, 215-224-3882. That's 215-224-3882. Dooley Brothers Roofing, the roofing experts you can trust. That number again, 215-224-3882. 215-224-3882. Before your roof becomes unruly, call Dooley antiquity to the present our people need to develop a new paradigm it's time for an awakening sundays 7 p.m with your host mr moderator our distinguished guests brothers and sisters our friends and, and our enemies <laughs> Everybody is here. As many of you know, uh, last March, when it was announced that I was no longer in the black Muslim movement, it was pointed out that it was my intention to work among the 22 million non-Muslim Afro-Americans and to try and form some type of organization or create a situation where the young people, our young people, the students and others, could study the problems of our people for a period of time and then come up with a new analysis and give us some new ideas and some new suggestions as to how to approach a problem that too many other people had been playing around with for too long. And that we would have some kind of meeting and determine at a later date, whether to form a black nationalist party or a black nationalist army. <laughs> there have been many of our people across the country from all walks of life who have taken it upon themselves to try and pool their ideas and to come up with some kind of solution to the problem that confronts all of our people. And tonight we are here to try and get an understanding of what it is they've come up with. The economic philosophy of black nationalism only means that we should... The, the political, the economic philosophy of black nationalism only means that Welcome back to Time for an Awakening. 
We're joined in conversation this evening with activist, organizer, chairman of POCC, Prisoners of Conscious Committee, and the Black Panther Party Cubs. The chairman is with us this evening, Fred Hampton, Jr. Uh, chairman Fred. Yes, sir. Before we, uh, before I ask you this question with the, the few minutes that you got left with us, let me play this clip. It was a clip coming out of Chicago. It was some type of talk program, and a young man stood up and addressed uh, the situation. I'll play it for the listening audience. Talking about violence, police isn't the answer. You could put 100,000 police officers on the street and not reduce violence in the city of Chicago because police are only there to react. They're only there to react. You have to put money into prevention. And right now, a lot nobody has really said it, but his name is Rahm Emanuel. And this mayor that we have in the city of Chicago does not care about black people. And I'm going to put that on the record. When you can invest $100 million into DePaul basketball arena when they can practice at the United Center for free, and $16.4 million into uptown to build upscale apartments, when you can build these new bus stops we got now downtown, but walk in our neighborhoods and not a million is coming. When we, we walking past boarded up schools, boarded up houses. They knock it down with red X's with no plan to redevelop. Mental health facilities shut down. The job, uh, the unemployment rate is the highest in Chicago than it is around the country. We just want to talk about violence. You got to talk about the economics, not police. Just wanted to play that clip. I don't, uh, I know you like, know a lot of people in Chicago, uh, uh, Jamin Fred, but I don't know whether you know that young man that confronted this reporter in reference to uh, the issue of violence in Chicago dealing with the, the, the Mayor Rahm Emanuel. But let me ask this question and get you to expand on it in the time we have left. Me personally, I'm a big proponent of uh, of uh, independent black schools, whether it starts in a home, whether it's in uh the, the uh, church communities use some of our places of worship to start re-educating our children. Uh, the charter school model, we see what that's doing, and we see what that's about. Uh, in Chicago, it's no different than Philadelphia or any other cities where hundreds of public schools in the black community have been shut down uh, for gentrification, uh, to use them for uh, high-scale apartment buildings, things of that nature, for young white folks to come back to the major cities. You had a number of black politicians in Chicago that got behind uh, the mayor, your mayor, the mayor of the city of Chicago, in requiring that high school students that graduate, uh, it's just a proposal, I don't even know whether it passed or whether it's law, and you can enlighten our listening audience on it. But he made a proposal that high school students can't get the diploma out of high school unless they show four things. Number one, prove they have a secure job. Come in writing and show that they have a secure job when they're leaving high school or a letter of acceptance to college or a letter showing that they're in some type of trade apprenticeship or a letter of acceptance to the military. Now, you got our children that's behind the eight ball automatically with this substandard education that we're getting in our communities. Thousands, hundreds of schools nationally, thousands of schools nationally have been shut down in the communities. And you've got a proposal like this to put them further behind an eight ball where they're demanding all these things come back with a uh, proof of a secure job. The jobless rate in Illinois and Chicago is the highest in the nation. So how are these children supposed to come back with these things? Talk about this issue, uh, Chairman Fred, in the, some of the time we have left. I'm glad. I'm glad that, uh, that it, it, was, all, it was. It was noted that uh, the amount of uh, Negro politicians that you know that, that go along with these policies and these edicts that come from the mayor, you know, and the, and the mayor and the machine. Not just with this, but so many, you know, uh, so, so many other policies and the tax of the wage on our people. And um, a lot of times we hear these sound bites. We hear these different, you know, these emotional hit terms, you know. And uh, and a lot of times we are make up. We are. We are I people we'll come in with this, uh, like this, this, like, uh, uh, where they trying to get each other better our education, and like something they, the, the state, they, they'll put a law on our, uh, the attack on a law on a, uh, better yet, an attack on our people, 
and we we come up with something like, well, this they must be trying to in some way benefiting us. As I mean, historically, uh, how the education, the the miseducation, uh, 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 the transportation, everything uh, I mean, uh, I mean, used as war tactics on us. And if you if you if you take what's happening in Chirac and other places and just say what's happening anywhere else in the world. People would say, "Wait a minute! These are wait, these are human rights violations." You know, just even the uh, I think they, they broke history records. And so at the time that he sh- uh, 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 they should close out fifty public schools at one time, at one time in Chicago, <laughs> tie into the, this, the, uh, the time and the, the red line. The red line is, is a train that, that goes through you know right through, through through the hood that was shut down. Um, and the, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the grants that was allotted to the, the, uh, the Greenland on, on the north side to the white community, all these different contradictions, all these, it, again, if we were to say what happened to any other, other place, they'd be recognized as, as, as war tactics. Uh, Adding to that, the whole even going to these schools, these, these prisons, because you know, uh, I think the term, what's the name, is kind of outdated. The term, you say, from the school to prison pipeline, is literally a prison now. Hmm. You are coming to, to these places. You are, the, 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 I mean, even clinical psychologists talk about the, the detrimental impact when you, you you can't learn in an environment where you got to be searched and scanned. The police is there with you. You know what I'm saying? You, you have actually, I mean, like law enforcement working in these hospitals and uh, 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 in these schools, and these are the same exact police that are planting drug packs on these children. And you get uh, you get mysteriously shot, and you get to the hospital. It's the same police there. Then you go to school. It's the same. coming to Philadelphia next week, we can uh, and, and uh, engage them. Um, we'll be out there, so um, engage them there. Um, once again, um, I think it's really important to, um, you know, to recognizing that we need to have a clear understanding, a clear analysis of what we're dealing with instead of just dealing with the sound bites that we're, um, sound bites and personalities. Oh, yes, yes. I'm not to cut you off. Yes. That, even with that policy, if I can add this to even with that that policy, let's put, let's put let's, I think people should put in context what type of conditions we're living in, uh, or better yet, as Marvin Gaye said, this ain't living that we existing in. The criteria is like say that you have the, you, these four the, the four parts of criteria that you in order for you to graduate. Mind you, that uh, even you have to have a, a, a commitment from some employer that you that you receive a job. The only the only quote unquote jobs in, in, our, in, our, in our hood in our community. Is the foreign merchants telling these little young sisters that they they can come behind the the, the, the foreign stink glass and work for them under the condition that they, that they do something strange for some change, and uh, or these cats get involved in pushing the the, um, the narcotics on the street. They can't even get that no more. The cartel and took, took that. They can't. The, 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 the young black youth can't even get that job no more. The cartel to shut all that down. So the, then the other option, they say you have to uh, join the military. It's, a, it's like I give you, I commit to you, give you some free cars, but you have to buy your gas from me. You know, you, know, you know what I'm saying? This is it's, it's and Chicago has the highest amount of military academies now in the country. So it's I mean they ain't got to say the draft no more. All they got to do is change the words around. And say okay now this would you this says it has happened. This is the condition that comes with it. it it's it's a setup. It's a setup. Jim mm. and Fred, I want to thank you for being with us, spending some time with us, and. Uh, we are scheduled to do a live broadcast on Saturday at the uh, at the African Independence Day celebration over there at uh, at uh, 52nd and uh, Pine Street. So we'll be out there. Yes. You'll see the table. Time for awakening. Come on over. Spend some right. time with us. What time will you be there, yes. uh, Chairman Fred? Uh, don't let, uh, You're not sure. Don't let me get the wrong time. Okay. I don't have that me right now. No, don't worry about it. We'll. we'll I'll get. I'll get the. I'll uh, get in contact with uh, yeah. Brother Obi and several of the organizers I look, and find out what I time we'll 
we'll kind of coordinate our broadcast time for the time you'll be there. Right on, right on, right on. We look, we looking forward to it. I want to thank you for you being with us. Thank you for your work, man, and continue to struggle. Thank you. Thank the listeners, and uh, we thank the people in general. And look forward to seeing uh, our people uh, this Saturday. Peace to you, brother. Peace, man. Right on. Peace to you. Found the people, friend.